Should we all get in the hot tub? Ooh, Just to, to make it authentic. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you gonna say hi? Good evening, everyone. That's a that's a bayou. Just watch out there. There might be dog fun out there. You know what I mean? So, yes, you heard hot tub. I have the Dillmans that just got here. Hey, everybody. I don't know. I wouldn't say they're in from New York because they don't live in New York anymore. They, they're, they're gypsies. Gypsies, no man. These are, True gypsies. These are, my, these are my gypsy friends. <laughs> everybody has to have a gypsy friend. <laughs> Red friends and gypsy friends. So we're going to see how this goes with a bunch of children's in the background. Look at what these people brought to my house. Can you believe this stuff? Uh, the whole family. The oh, my gosh. Oh, and people want to oh, act like, like we actually like people and stuff and like their kids. And <laughs> oh, my gosh. And that, yeah, like you can't build a business with kids in town. Right. Like, how dare these people be real? <laughs> All right. <laughs> So we'll definitely have to figure that one out. Good thing we haven't started yet. Let me go Facebook Live as we're waiting. All right, I think I have volume. Can everybody hear me okay? No. No, you can't hear me okay? Okay. Mm -mm. Perfect. No, you can't hear me okay, but you're answering me okay. <laughs> I can hear you perfect. Perfect, all right. Go wherever they There we go. It's all right. Fine. I can hear you good here. Perfect, perfect. All right. Let me go live. <laughs> All right. Here, share in group. Yeah, that's a nice machine. I gotta have ice. You know you gotta I mean, with all my crazy ice chests around here. Team ice, here we go. Welcome, welcome everyone. As, as you're jumping off, you would do the customary mute your phone or your computer. Anytime you get on any Zoom, it's always customary. It's part of the deal to make sure that we're muted to where we do not distract all the other people, especially when Especially when we know that I can be distracted easily. I am super easily distracted. And we're going to see if I'm going to have to beat some children around this place. It's going to be great. I might have to run inside if they get too loud because I'll definitely lose my track. Let me see. Team Zoom. Alrighty, let's go live. I don't know if everybody can hear me as I'm. Talking about I think it's live now. And my ass music on, it's unmuted, and I'm not in a position to see the screen. All right, here we go. Let's mute everybody. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to be a mute everybody kind of guy because we have some rule breakers around this place with all these freaking rebels so with that i'm not sure if there's too much glare in the back i might have to uh i might have to move my phone around here it's amazing how they're actually keeping the kids quiet we're gonna see how long this lasts listen children we got days here. How long y'all gonna be here? Like five all week, Chris. Five all days. Week. Like there's plenty of time for me to yell at y'all. Let's not make tonight the best time. So I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna we're gonna see how this all works. I'll have it swear. So I just need y'all to do me a favor and we'll we'll keep it quiet during this time and then the rest of the week we can be as loud as we want. Unless I'm on the phone, which is all the time. I'm joking. So welcome everybody. Two, I wanted to move just because of the glare of the way the lights were gone. So, all right, yes, I do sound better. Thank you, Betty. So, guys, I am flat out excited. I don't know who all was on that uh, live that the Triple Crowns did tonight where they announced our new product that we are going to be able to participate in 
this month. What they didn't share with you guys, which I'm not going to share, which I am going to share a little bit, but there's others coming. So they just shared one of the many um, flavors of goodness. And what I can tell you all is Marcy was a very naughty girl and basically let me taste the stuff and it was delicious. In fact, when I'm talking about, when we look at all the products that we have, I mean, we're all, a lot of us are coffee drinkers, right? And with that, basically our coffee tastes like coffee, but we can all agree that there's some better coffees out there when we're talking about flavor, none that are gonna make you feel better than ours. But the reality is, is I've become accustomed to the, the way the coffee tastes in my coffee. I've been drinking Folgers coffee for as long as my wife's been making it. I have no say in this situation. That's just being real there as well. She's been drinking Folgers. So guess what Chris drinks? Folgers. Because she drinks Folgers. And that's what she makes. So for Chris, I get to add my nitro to my Folgers. And I use some weird fancy creamer that I love, which is oat goodness. I think it's made by Silk. It's called Oh Yeah, for those that like to say, hell yeah. So it's Oh Yeah. So with that, guys, um, that's how I drink my coffee. And when it comes to tea, I'm a Southern boy, and I like myself, me some sweet tea in this place, right? So I can only imagine when they were talking about a tea, I was sitting there thinking, oh, another product, you know, that we're going to have to put in and doctor up and all that stuff. And some of us love uh, zest and some of us might tolerate it and that's just being real as well but what I can tell you when I tasted this stuff I was like this is it like there's nothing that I wanted to add what is I was like what did you put in that Marcy and she was like that's the way that it comes that's the way that it tastes and what I can tell you I can't share on exactly how it made me feel over a long period of time because I just snuck a sip right so I didn't get to try a whole serving, but word on the street, based on many of the people that are basically sharing, and some of those rule breakers might be sharing in the comments over here. So if, if you guys have been drinking the chai tea, because I know some of y'all have a different flavor, so don't you talk about stuff, because then you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna break the whatever it's called, the secretivism or whatever you wanna call it. So, uh, but if you've been drinking the Thai tea, well, uh, Thai, blah, 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 I can't even say this stuff. If you've been drinking the chai tea, share in the comments what you've been experiencing because I'm sure uh, you feel the same way that I did. So, with that, guys, what I wanna talk about tonight a little bit, and, and it's been amazing. I've been on a lot of calls over the last week with many different people. Um, some of the core people that were here that were the original, there was original five to 10 people that collaborated on what we wanted it to look like and more importantly, what we wanted it to feel like. And that feeling when you hear us talk about this, if you've been on a prospecting call over the last six months to a year, you heard what we were talking about and that feeling that we wanted to create. And in that feeling, what we, what we talked about is a place of love and connection, a place where people feel good about where they are, where they want to just drink the coffee, sing Kumbaya with this, or whether they want to basically, um, you know, build a business with this. We said we want to create an environment where people get in where they fit in, where people do what it is that they want to do. Well, what I can share with you is over the last two years, I've seen a little bit of deviation of where some of us might not only have changed a little bit of what we've been doing to get where we were, but basically it just things kind of shift over time. Can we all agree? We, we shared the analogy of many of us, you know, some of us might be married or in a relationship and remember what it was like in the beginning. Oh my gosh, she was so sweet. And for you guys, you know, or, or the ladies, you were like, man, he opened the door for me and he was this and he was that. And then next thing you know, you marry that sucker and they totally change on. You're like, who in the hell is this person? What happened to the person that I married, right? Can anybody relate with me? And if your spouse is next to you, you might get in trouble for even admitting this. 
I hear Christine over here is over. Actually, both of them are raising their hand. They're <laughs> high fiving over here, going, "Both of us are a little crazy, right?" And and guys, the real it was funny. I was talking to a guy earlier today, and I'm in a partnership on my boat, and another friend of mine's going into a partnership with another friend on a boat, and he was asking me what kind of agreements we have, and I'm like, "Well, I mean, we don't really have. It's just all we basically just." agreed on something right and he's like asking about documentation all that i'm like well the reality is is you know is he crazy right like are either one of y'all crazy to where you're going to be fighting and weird stuff right and and it was so funny he goes well we're all a little crazy aren't we and i'm like i say that every day i'm like everybody's a little nuts and he said almost verbatim what i say it's like it's a matter of what kind of crazy we're talking about because we're all a little nuts right so I share that because, you know, in our relationships, um, we realize that our spouse is a little crazy. And it's, what in the hell is that? Um, and our spouse is a little crazy. We're a little crazy. It's a matter of how do we work that crazy together, right? So in our system, back to the point, is what we've been selling is a feeling, right? From the very beginning, from the first day, what we sold was a feeling. And you'll hear us share the way that Mark and Judy made us feel. The way they made us feel in getting started, the way they made us feel, the way they believed in us, the way they poured into us, and the way that, and, and just to let you know that they lead their business where they create a support system where you can use them anytime you need, but they let you run your own business. They're not in your stuff. They're not telling you what you need to do or what you wouldn't need to do. They do counsel me. They do counsel many of us whenever we get our little craziness goes a little too crazy. If, if any of you all have ever counseled with Mark or Judy, when you're going through a little bit of crazy, you can let them know in the comments because just to let people know that it's okay to be a little crazy, right? But with that being said, one of the great things about them is what you see is what you get. And that this couple has just created an environment that we knew if we can make everybody feel like that, then that was going to be a home run. And the reason why I'm sharing this tonight is because, as I shared, a lot of us have gotten away from a little bit of the way that we did things. Just a little bit here, a little bit there. And what we're doing right now, and it, it, it's been amazing, is we're doing course correction. You know, I was pulled onto a call uh, with Garrett and Sylvia the other night on Saturday night, it's like nine o'clock. I'm having a crawfish bowl over here. And, and Ricky texts me, he's like, jump on this call. And I'm like, what for? Like, I'm doing something, right? And he's like, jump on, it's with Garrett. And I get on there and I had no idea it was going to be Sean McLean and, and uh, Mike Messini and it's Ricky and it's Mark. And guys, this is the coolest thing. I'd been talking to Ricky about some things. I'd been talking to Mark and Judy about some things. I was talking to Garrett about some things. And I was really just doing some self-exploration myself. And I was looking at what were the things and how did we feel and what did we do in the very beginning? And I was really trying to get back to the core of what that was. And with that, it was crazy. I get on this call that I'm not one to get on this call to like, it was more just to listen. And I'm listening to Mike and, and Sean, and you would have thought that they had been listening in on the calls that Ricky and I were having and Mark and I were having and Judy and I were having and many of the other leaders, Robin and I were having, Gavin and I have talked about this. And it was like they were listening in on all these calls. And you would think that this thing was collaborated and that they were, you know, I'm telling you, it was like to the core of exactly what we talked about in the beginning. And one of the things that has been the mantra in many of these conversations is the word feeling. And I want to highlight that because this is the reality. And this is why we shifted into a Mindset Monday call. Because what we know is that your actions are going to be based on the way that you feel. Your actions and what you do in the business, like can we all agree, like how many of us have thought about working out and then we didn't feel like it? Let's see who's gonna be truthful in the comments, right? And then we didn't feel like it. 
So is it safe to say that we act on the way that we feel, whether we're going to go to the gym, whether we don't go to the gym, whether we're going to be nice to somebody or not, whatever it might be, it all boils down to the way that we feel. So why do we talk about this? Why are we, why are we sharing this right now? Because guys, as a core group, as a team, it is so important that we stay consistent with that feeling. And, and, and it's, it's crazy as we've been having all these conversations, it's really gotten me to go to another level to make sure that that feeling continues. So on the leader call last week, I was talking about, um, and I'll tie all this together. You're going to have me jump around. That's okay. You're going to have to just deal with it because that's how I roll, right? So on the leader call, I was talking about, um, you know, as leaders, our job is to make people feel a certain way. And our job is to create that environment. And, and the most important thing that we do in this business, the most important thing in this entire business is build relationships. It's called network marketing. It's called relationship marketing. It's about relationships. It's about truly getting to know the people that you have built relationships with. And guys, so I practiced that this weekend. So what did I do this weekend? I had a whole bunch of calls. And some of y'all are going, well, I didn't get that call. But I did make the call to many people. And I reached out and I just told people, for instance, Shane McCardle. He was like in the second wave of the originals, right? Like he was not week one. He was maybe week two or three, right? I think week two. So we would already, before we actually got started, there was a group of us that were communicating what we wanted to look like, what we wanted to feel like. And then Shane came right into that. And then he added value to it, right? And then there was, Gavin came weeks later. He was like, when, what, I don't know what date Gavin came in, but he bought into the same feeling, right? I know that Marcy came in. She was like right on the edge of wave one and wave two. She was like one of the first leader women along with Robin was in the core group, right? And we had Kim and we had Cassandra and of course, you know, Ricky and Jessica and all that. But so I'm sharing this because I just called Shane and just tell him, hey man, I see, Shane is on every freaking call. Like this dude is on the, the What's Up, not only the What's Up Wednesdays, but he supports Tommy on the Tuesday night calls. He supports every single Saturday morning training. He supports every single Monday night training. He supports everything. And guys, it's, it's that plugging in, plugging in, plugging in that basically helped create this. So with that, I called him up and I just wanted to say, hey, buddy. You know, a lot of times I might not use your name because I, I might share the core group, the first people, right? And when we talk about the culture that we wanted to create, it was that first group of people that were in the conversation. But it doesn't mean that all these other people didn't bring value. And I just wanted to tell you, buddy, that I love and appreciate you and that I do acknowledge that you have added major <laughs> value to our team. So I share that because there's a lot of people on this call that are in the same place. So I just started reaching out to people and didn't talk business. Like that was the extent of business. And by the way, if y'all saw my toilet talk last night or whatever you want to call it, that was inspired by Shane McArdle because we were talking about daily activities. And that's doing your business is the daily activity, by the way. So with that, I can say the worst things I know. I know. Y'all don't have to tell me. So with that, guys, I just spent the, the weekend calling people and just reaching out and telling them, I, you know, that I, I appreciate them and I appreciate the value that they bring and I appreciate our relationship, you know, and it was cool. Like I had a talk with Melissa Lucas and got to hear about, you know, her family and her parents and, and how they had a boat and, and, and how she grew up. And I found out about her ethnic background, which I didn't know. Just all kinds of stuff, you know, like different people might be Irish or French or whatever. And just getting to really know people is so cool, right? So I was talking about this on the leader call. And it made me realize that if we're going to talk about something, we have to make sure that we're doing it. And to tie all this in, many of us, we get started in this business and we start doing something. We're out doing the activity originally. And then we bring on a few people 
And then we start expecting them to do it. And then we quit doing what it was that we did. And we want to start managing them. And we want to start, you know, being their manager or whatever. And, and like I shared last week, like people just imagine network marketing is this thing where you sit on your throne and your team just feeds you grapes and life is great because they're all going to make you rich and you never have to do anything, right? And that's not the truth. The truth is, is that you have to be that you have to, in phase one activity. I'm trying to mute people. All right, there you go. We have to be in phase one activity all the time. Because if we want people to basically do what we're doing, then we need to be doing it. And I was on, um, you know, a, a, a call with Robin and about 20 something other people this morning. And I was sharing, you know, um, basically, if you ran your business like this, and if every single one of us on this call ran our business like this, then either amazing things would happen or like we would all quit, right? So are y'all ready for this? Oh, this is going to get some of y'all. <laughs> it's going to get y'all. This is the deal. If everyone on your team did what you did today, how much money did you make? If everyone on your team did the activity that you did today, if everyone on your team did exactly what you did, like, do you have a big old happy fun check? Or do you have like a check where you're like, I need to go find something. I need to go get a job in this place because I didn't make squat. And a lot of times we are looking at numbers, but we forget to look at our own numbers. And that's why last week I talked about the only number that matters is the one you put in the box and the one that you actually put. And you can't expect your team to do things that you're not willing to do. And that's why I made it a point to be reaching out and just building a relationship. Tony got one of these calls because I just see Tony's on the screen. I called Tony last night. I think I woke her up. But at any rate, minute, um, at any rate my dad, look, and, and guys, it's impossible to have a relationship with every single person in the team. But there is a core group of leaders that I try to keep in touch with and some of them might I might talk to more than others and some of them I, I might not so now let's get to the whole point that I shared all that is when we talk about the core values and the core system that we created we talk about a feeling the feeling that we give people the feeling on whatever and that boils down to when we get someone started the first thing we want to do is a welcome call because in the welcome call, now let's break it down. If we're going to talk about a feeling, let's break down the this, this six basic human needs super quick. I'm not going to take a long time on this. But number one is certainty. Certainty comes from you having belief first. When you start to doubt, when you start to, you know, wonder, am I doing the right thing? Is this for me? Can I do this? Can I, whatever. Basically, that person is buying that feeling. They're buying that belief. So number one, you have to believe. And that's why step one in the, in the system is drink coffee, be happy. If you're not drinking coffee and you're not happy, why the hell somebody want to come join you? Right? So you got to be happy. You got to be excited. You got to be fired up. You got to feel like people need to know about this. Gavin's telling me a story about um, one of Chrissy's new per people that has like 20 something customers in like a week or so fired up. And I'm like, well, what product is she sharing? Because you know, we should bring, sells all kinds I of. I think we should, uh, Chris. I think we should yep. bring her on really quick. Go ahead, Carrie Joe, Are you, are you out there? Saw her name, maybe. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Oh, you're on the hot seat. Ah, <laughs> uh, you would do that to me. <laughs> so you have like 20 how long have you been in the business and how many customers do you have so far um i think today i hit 46 and i signed up christy help me out what day was it um january 14th does that sound right okay awesome and just hit bronze in nine days so what we were talking 
um, last night I asked you, you know, what products you're sharing and like what you're doing. So maybe you just want to share like really quick, what is it that you're doing to grow so quickly from the time that you're starting? Just being myself. And I've had one person tell me today, you know, I love talking to you about the product because you're not shoving it down my throat. You're being real. You're being, you're showing me something that you can tell that you're passionate about. And then another one told me last night that they can just tell that it's completely changed me, that I'm so happy. And that's, that's what I love is everybody can see the excitement and how it's already changed my life in a month and a half and how, yes, I've lost weight, but people are coming to me about how happy I am and how excited I am. And that's what is just amazing about it all. That is awesome. What last question? What products are people enrolling on? You have forty some customers. What are they buying? Uh, mainly the dose coffee. I have a lot of the dose nitro, but it's mainly in between the coffee and the nitro. No way. Yep. I have I have a few zests, but mainly the mainly right. coffee. Thank you so much for sharing. I know we put you on the spot. <laughs> so this is the thing when we talk about certainty can we all agree like carrie doesn't have some special coffee that you don't have like can we all agree that she has the same coffee like she has the same coffee guys the same coffee that you can share and i know that we have some people in other countries that might have a different version or something and then y'all are gonna probably be sending me some mean nasty message tell me you're gonna you know beat my children or whatever it is you're gonna tell me but I understand that you might be a little different. But for the most part, can we all agree we have the same products? We have the same company. We have the same opportunity. It's all the same. But you don't understand my upline. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, y'all have the same upline. Mark and Judy, your upline, all right? So y'all have the same upline. So I don't care who you signed up with, what, whatever. Y'all have the same upline somewhere. So how about we stop the excuses and you drink the freaking stuff and get excited and then let people feel what they're feeling from Carrie. So again, step one is certainty in the six basic human needs. I don't know if y'all can hear the little kid in the back. I'm about to start screaming in this place. So step one is certainty in the six basic human needs. Number two is uncertainty. We're not gonna talk a lot about that. Guys, that's why people love adventure. That's why people jump out of planes. They do a bunch of stuff. People don't want the exact same thing every day. Like if, you know, the only people I know that might eat the same thing every day are bodybuilders that are like doing these stupid weird diets, right? But the bottom line is people want a little bit of uncertainty. They don't want the same freaking thing every day in their life. And that's where uncertainty comes in. But the other thing is, is love and significance. So these are the things that we focused in on as a team. One, love and connection. We knew we had to make people feel the way Mark and Judy made us feel. Number two, significance. This is why welcome calls are absolutely mandatory if you want to build a huge team. When I go through and I look through here and I look at the top leaders and I look at all the people that are really winning in a big way, I know without a shadow of a doubt they're doing welcome calls. I would say 99%. There might be 1% out there that might not be doing it and having success, but 99% of the leaders are doing welcome calls. Why do we do that? Because people need to know that they matter. People need to know that you care. People need to know that they're important. So when we talk about that feeling, like what I started this whole mess with was you have to make people feel special and that they matter. That's your job. So if things are not going the way you want them to, you need to look at the mirror and say, what can I do better to make sure that everyone feels like that? And it starts with you being fired up. It starts with you being excited. It starts with you making a decision. I might make this happen versus making freaking excuses. So with that being said, now we go to contribution. Well, how do we make people feel like they're contributing? Is it safe to say that most people that even, you know, hey, Carrie has a whole bunch of customers. But is it safe to say that as we're building a team, like most people are gonna hit bronze from helping some other people get started in the business as well. And whether you're bringing in one customer or whether you're bringing in 50 or 
43, like Kerry, basically you are contributing to creating a story. See, the big stories are not big stories. They're a bunch of little stories added up to the big story. Like, you know, I would say, I, we'll just use one of the ambassadors, and I'm not even going to name a name because then somebody else will get upset, right? But when you really look at their personal volume, they're more than likely a bronze. And that's the reality. When you look at their personal customers, and when you look at what their personals have done, more than likely most ambassadors, most, are going to be bronze. And then they have bronzes under them. That have bronzes under them, that have bronzes under them, that have bronzes under them, that made them an ambassador. So guys, if you're sitting here comparing yourself and you're going, well, Carrie's special and there's something wrong with her or something right with her, whatever you want to call it, because you're going to make your own story up, right? And there's something special about her. Yeah, she drank this stuff, got excited, and people can tell. Go figure. We've only talked about that for two years, right? But she's drinking the product. She's sharing it with people. She's fired up. She's excited. People buy into it and they want to buy it. Well, guess what? By Carrie going out and doing what she's doing, she hit bronze. Well, that creates a story, a bigger story, because two bronzes make a silver, right? Four bronzes make a gold. You know, you, basically, now I'm going to start having to do the math, but basically to get platinum, 10 bronzes is actually less. Well, let's just call it 10 because I don't have to do all the other math, right? Guys, the way to get to the top is to help people start off at the bottom and get to bronze. And that's why Mark and Judy, who you want to talk about crazy. These people are freaking insane. They're taking money out of their own pocket and they're giving it to anyone in the entire company, in their team, not in their team, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you hit bronze for the first time, you're getting 250 bucks. Guys, there, I don't, First off, there's a lot of companies that don't do that. But when you talk about the leadership, how does that make you feel? Knowing that these people are willing to basically do that for other people? Like, guys, if you can make people feel the way they make people feel, it's game over. It's really what it boils down to. So, guys, when we are helping other people hit bronze, we're talking about contribution. You're making a big deal. And see, people buy into a cause. They buy into a movement. They buy into something bigger than themselves. As a company, we all need to come together and say, you know what? We are going to make the biggest mess in the industry. We are going to create more, more $500 to $1,000 income earners than any company in the history of network marketing. And guys, if we do that, and you're a part of that, you contribute to that, you will have that amazing check that you've always dreamed of. In fact, many of you all will have a bigger check than what you thought was possible if we focus in on that. And that's why they did that. That's why Mark and Judy did this. They knew that if we can get to the core of what created this, what are you doing? You are totally distracting me, little fella. So at the end, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So so y'all about to see me start throwing some kids in the hot tub and all kinds of craziness around this place. So um, with that being said, guys, if we can do this, if we can help more people hit bronze, your check is going to be absolutely amazing. So with that, the last thing is growth. And guys, these calls are designed for growth. These basically, you know, the, the, Monday, night, the Monday night calls, the Saturday morning trainings, so what's up Wednesdays, what Garrett also shared is they're going to start getting more into personal development on those calls and start really pouring into people, which will be totally great. So with that, that is enough of like the nuts and bolts, the bits and pieces. Guys, if you can get back to the core of why we did this, which is love and connection, contribution, significance, and growth, and make people feel like that, it's a game over right there. So now let's do our two minute mindset Monday, <laughs> because I just talked about all kinds of stuff, which guys, I'm joking. That was, uh, ha that did have a lot to do with mindset because it's so important on how you feel, the way that you look at this. So I was having this conversation. In fact, well, actually I wasn't, 
Ricky told me he had this conversation with Sean when I shared with Ricky what I was going to talk about. And what I wanted to talk about is the cricket in the ant. And, and y'all are going to be like, man, you've been hanging out with Sean McLean too much. You're starting to get that little country twang. You sound all weird and stuff. But I think, so what happened is when I'm losing my voice, it's easier to talk country than it is not. So, um, <laughs> so with that, guys, um, when you look at a cricket, crickets are like, they're, you know, they start the business too, right? But the cricket, they don't prepare. The cricket just is like, you know what, I'm going to eat while I can, I'm going to do this, whatever. It's springtime. It's beautiful, right? But the ants, if you notice, they're always working. The ant is basically working to save up for winter or the gra grasshopper. People are basically correcting me. Sorry, my stories suck. It's okay. So the grasshopper or the cricket, aren't they kind of in the same family? Like grass, one's green, one's brown, whatever. Anyway, I was going to say something stupid. I'm not going to. But at any rate, guys, ants have a job to do. And if you ever watch an ant, they are relentless. And I'm sharing this because as you're building this business, if you had a welcome call that was effective, the goal of the welcome call is to help you connect emotionally. The feeling of what it's going to be like when you accomplish your goal to the simple activity of the four steps. I'm spitting all over my screen. And so the whole goal is to basically connect them to the feeling of what it's gonna be like, what that's gonna look like, how is that gonna be? And then basically we help them connect. So guys, an ant decides we're gonna make this happen no, no matter what. An ant will carry things 50 times bigger than them. They're, I don't know how many times, really, because one of y'all probably going to correct me. Somebody's probably doing a Google search right now. How many times over the ant's weight can they carry so they can correct me? I know people love to do that stuff. So ants have focus. Ants know, and y'all are going, where's your focus? Dude, you're all over the place. It's okay. So with that, ants have a job to do, and they freaking do it. Have you ever sat down and watched an ant as they're walking and you put your hand in front of them? What that ant does immediately, they don't go, oh my gosh, Chris put his hand in front of me and he did this because this, I want you to think about how you sound sometimes and you start making up all the excuses, right? An ant doesn't do that. An ant goes, I need to go around. And if you go on that side and you do it again, they go try to go around again. And then if, next thing you know, they're climbing over your ass. They're freaking going over you. Oh, my God, he said that A word on a team call. I'm so sorry. I know I'm going to get that one, too. But that's okay. Guys, ants basically never, ever stop. They have a job to do. They know what they're going to go do, and they're going to do it no matter what. The question is, is have you connected your dreams to basically the activity and going, I'm going to do it no matter what. I'm going to push no matter what. I don't care what obstacle gets in front of me. I don't care what product change we have. I don't care what shipping issue, what whatever. The dog ate my peanut butter. I don't really care what the hell the excuse is because this is the reality. And I remember my mentor told me, I gave him an excuse and he goes, so you ran out of peanut butter? And I was like, no, this is what happened. And he goes, so you ran out of peanut butter? And I was sitting there going, dude, are you not listening, you dummy? You big dummy. Basically, I said this happened. He goes, so you ran out of peanut butter? And I'm like, why do you keep saying that dumb stuff? I ran out of peanut butter. He said, because all excuses are equal. It doesn't matter what the excuse is. You might as well have ran out of peanut butter. You might as well have had this happen. You might as well have had that happen because it's all the same freaking thing. An excuse is an excuse is an excuse. And when you decide that you're going to do it no matter what, you will become that ant. You will go over, around, under, dig a hole, do whatever you have to do to make it happen. And how do you get to that point? You make a decision. Decision means death of all other options. You say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what it looks like. This is why I'm going to do it. And this is what it's going to feel like. Sean McLean, how many times did you hear me talking about the darn boat? 
I talked about the boat over and over and over, talking about how I was going to get this boat. And guys, when I started talking about it, it seemed like an absolute impossibility. And then my buddy calls me up and he goes, dude, we need to get a boat. And I'm like, my credit's shot. And he goes, well, I don't have the money, but you, I have the credit. You're making the money. I have the credit. Let's do it. And basically, we were able to make it happen and do it. And it just showed up. I didn't ask him to do it. He basically offered to do it. And the point was, is I talked about what it was going to feel like. I talked about what it was like to surf. And Sean's sitting there going, surfing behind a boat, whatever, and all that stuff. And they went with me to go pick up the boat. They went with me and experienced that whole process with me. Guys, we went to Sarasota. We stayed at a friend's house. We had a good time, went out on a boat with somebody else that we had just met. And basically, next thing you know, the next day, we basically went and picked up the boat. I had already pre-bought stereo system. I had all this stuff. I'm in these people's driveway. You want to talk about visualizing? I already knew what the stereo was going to sound like. I knew all this stuff. I'm in these people's driveway taking out speakers and all this other kind of stuff in their driveway. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm taking a boat apart before we even signed the paperwork. They thought I was crazy. But the thing is, is I knew what it felt like. I knew what it was going to be like to watch my kid behind the boat. For that matter, I was excited to watch Sean and Kim behind the boat. You should have seen their face. That was like watching a kid too. I mean, I'm telling you, the joy that you get to experience, things that you can connect to, things that you can get fired up about, truly. Like, I get fired up when I'm watching a new person learn behind the boat. And you see them, and when they get it, when you feel the wave push you versus holding on to the rope. Sean, you know what I'm talking about, right? You're, you're behind the boat, and you feel it, and all of a sudden it starts pushing you, and the rope's not doing anything. And their face lights up and they're like, what in the world is going on in this place? And they're surfing behind the boat. I knew what it felt like. I knew what it looked like. And guys, I'm sharing this to share what do you know what what feels like? I don't know what that what is for you. The welcome call's purpose is for you to get to that what. For you to get to that feeling of what it's like when you accomplish what it is that you want and why you want it. And guys, if you can't visualize it and feel it like I'm sharing, then maybe you need to dig a little deeper and give yourself permission to really figure out what it is that drives you, to really figure out what's important to you, to really figure out what that's going to be like whenever, whatever your goal might be. And what I'm here to, to share with you guys tonight is that you can do far more than what you believe is possible. You're, you're so much better than you think. I believe that every single one of us were, were basically born for greatness, that God has already put in your strengths, what your gifts are, and you already have those things. You already have every seed that you need. And I shared this because I remember what it was like when I was looking for, well, as soon as I go to this training, as soon as I do this, as soon as I do that, then it's going to happen. Guys, you already have the greatness within you. Tap into what that is, figure out what it looks like, and then let's go out and do this and decide to be the ant to go get whatever your goal is, whatever your dream is, and let's make it happen. Guys, I truly believe with all my heart that this can be your vehicle to create whatever greatness that you desire in your life, but you have to first believe it. And it's our job as sponsors, and we call them sponsors because our job is to be there and support them and help them to dream when they might not have given themselves permission. Mark and Judy taught me the biggest lesson ever is that if you believe in people enough, then they'll start believing in themselves. I was at the lowest point of my life, beat up, busted, disgusted, but they saw the greatness that I had within me. And when you see where I came from two years ago to what we, we've been able to do now, a lot of it had to do with the belief that they had in me. And it inspired me to believe in myself again. With that being said, we believe in you all. We know what's possible. We know what you guys can create for yourselves. Let's go out there and do it. Yes. With that being said, everybody have an awesome night. All right, kids, y'all can be loud. Y'all want y'all want to share? All right. All right. Oh my God. What am I gonna have to do in the next few days? Thank you. 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 Thank you.